Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing group actions. Okay, so in the previous video what we saw is that if you have a group action by a group capital G on a set capital A, then what this allows you to do is associate with all of the elements of the group capital G a set permutation of the set capital A. Okay, and the way that this works is that if you take an arbitrary little g from our group capital G, then the set permutation uh, that I'm going to associate with this element little g, which we are denoting sigma subscript little g, is going to be the mapping that sends all the elements of the set capital A, so all little a from the set capital A, onto the element little g dot little a. Okay, so the element little g acting on the element little a, basically. Okay, now that is quite clearly a mapping from the set A onto the set A, because it's taking elements in the set A and it is mapping them onto other elements in the set A. Whatever G dot A is, it is always another element of the set A. Okay, so this is certainly a mapping from the set A to the set A, but what we've showed in the previous video is that that is actually a bijective map and therefore uh, this is actually a set permutation since it's a mapping from the set A to itself that is bijective. Okay, right. So what we've now seen then is that indeed if you define a group action by the group capital G on the set capital A, this allows you to associate with all of the elements of the group a set permutation of the set A. There's another thing that we need to check, however. Okay, we need to check that these set permutations of the set capital A that we are associating uh, with the elements of the group capital G um, are actually consistent with the group composition law. Okay, because remember, going back to the motivation for what we were trying to achieve with group actions, we were trying to formalize the concept that you could associate to elements of the group set permutations of some set which we're calling capital A, okay? But the big thing was that these weren't just any old set permutations. Those set permutations had to be consistent with the group composition law. I, it had to be the case that if you compose the two set permutations that the symbols are associated with uh, and get a new set permutation, that that answer its symbolic representative, the element of the group that it's associated with, is the same as the two elements of the group composed together in the group composition law. Okay, so let's put that down on paper. Okay, so onto a new piece of paper. So we want to check that the group composition law is consistent with the set permutations, or actually really it's the other way around. We want to make sure that these set permutations are consistent with the group composition law. Okay, so what we want to make sure then is that for all little g1 and little g2 that you pick from the group, okay, so you pick whatever little g1 and whatever little g2 you like from the group capital G, okay, it needs to be the case that if we take the set permutations that are associated with these two elements of the group and compose them together as set permutations, that that overall set permutation has to be the same as the set permutation associated with the composition of these two in the group. Okay, so putting that down in symbols, if we have the set permutation that's associated with sigma, sorry, associated with this element little g1, following the set permutation that's associated with the element little g2, okay, this needs to be the same as the set permutation that is associated with G1 composed with G2, where this is composition in the group, okay? So these two mappings need to agree for absolutely all little a is an element of capital A. So this is what I need to make sure of. This is what I mean when I say that the set permutations that we are associating with the elements of the group need to be consistent with the group composition law. I mean that if you take any two elements of the group and you look at this side here, so you take sigma g1 of sigma g2 of A, so the composition of the two set permutations that are associated with those elements, okay, the answer, the set permutation, which is the answer here, has to be the same as the set permutation associated with G1 composed with G2, where this is composition in the group capital G.
Okay, and that's precisely saying that for all a, these two things have to be the same, basically. Okay, so this equation needs to hold whatever little a you pick and whatever little g1 and little g2 you pick from the group. Okay, right. You might be able to guess just from my notation here which axiom of group actions we're actually going to use to prove this. Okay, uh, so let's do it then. Okay, so the way that we're going to prove this is we're just going to absolutely use the definitions of what the uh, answer to the uh, sigma or g2 of a and sigma g1 of something and sigma g1 composed with g2 of something is. We're just going to use the very definitions of these mappings basically. Okay, so what is the mapping sigma g2 of a? Okay, well this is the set permutation that we've associated with the element g2 and the way that we defined this was that it's just going to be g2 dot a. So we're just quite simply going to take the element g2 and we're going to act it on the element a. So the answer to this, no matter what g2 you are using and what little a you have here, okay, uh, is always g2 dot a. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to take sigma g1 of this answer. Now that's okay because g2 dot a will always be another element of the set a, so it's perfectly valid for us to take sigma g1 of that answer. But again, uh, we can just use the definition here and we can just say, okay, this will now be g1 acting on whatever this answer is equal to. So g1 dot g2 dot a. Okay, so the left hand side is exactly equal to this, so we can reduce it very, very easily to this just by using the definition of these uh, set permutations that we are associating to the elements of the group. Okay, so that's the left hand side. Let's now do the right hand side here. So sigma g1 composed with g2 of a. Okay, so just using the very definition of what this means, again, what we'll get is that for all little g1 and little g2 and little a that you pick, this will just equal g1 composed with g2 acting on the element little a. Again, just using the very definition of the associated set permutation to this element g1 composed with g2. Okay, so the left hand side is always equal to this. Okay, now why is it always going to be true that these two things are equal to one another? Well, because that is the very uh, axiom uh, that we insisted upon being true when we were defining group actions. We said uh, axiom number one of group actions was that no matter what little g1, little g2, or little a that you pick, it must always be the case that g1 dot g2 dot a must equal g1 composed with g2 dot a. Okay, so because of group, uh, sorry, because of axiom number one of group actions, it implies that this is true. Okay, so the way that we set up the axioms of group actions instantly makes it so that these associated set permutations of the set a, which we've associated with the elements of the group, are actually consistent with the group composition law. Okay, so indeed it is true that it doesn't matter whether you compose the associated set permutations as set permutations, or you associate, oh, sorry, or you compose uh, the elements of the group together first in the group composition table, and then work out what the associated set permutation is. You can do it in either or order. The set permutation that you end up with will be the same. So. Uh, the group composition law is reflecting the composition of the set permutations. Okay, right. Uh, so that's nice. We now understand then fully why uh, this definition of a group action uh, actually captures what we were trying to achieve. Okay, it captures this concept that you can associate to an, the elements of a group set permutations of some set. Okay, now, I just want to point out one thing here, okay, which is a generalization of anything that we've seen prior to this in the play this on group theory. So, in this play this on group theory, whenever we've been talking about the elements of a group being associated with set permutations of some other set, we've absolutely always thought of distinct elements of the group 
as being associated with distinct set permutations of the set, okay? It's never been the case that you've had different elements in the group being associated with the same set permutation, okay? Now that we have formalized this into the language of group actions, uh, it becomes the case that it is not necessarily true that a group action will associate to distinct, that a group action will always associate uh, distinct set permutations to distinct elements of the group. Okay, so what I'm saying is that in the definition of a group action, it is possible to come up with group actions uh, which associate diff, uh, the same uh, set permutation of the set capital A to different elements in the group. So what I'm saying is it's not necessarily the case that for all group actions you will associate uh, different uh, distinct set permutations of the set A to all of the elements of the group. It might be the case that there's some redundancy, basically, that you are associating more than one element of the group with the same set permutation of the set A, and we will see that concept again later on. Okay, we'll come back to this and we'll explore it in more detail. Okay, but the reason I bring it up now is that I just want to point it out for the first time, and I just want to introduce you to a bit of nomenclature, okay, which is the description of a group action as being faithful, okay? So if someone describes a group action by the group G on the set A as a faithful group action, what that means is the intuitive concept that different elements in the group are being associated with different set permutations of the set A. Okay, so that it's never the case uh, in a faithful group action that you have different elements of the group corresponding to the exact same set permutation of the set A. Okay, so if you've got then a non-faithful group action, it will be the case that uh, you will have different elements in the group being uh, associated with the same set permutation of the elements of the set A. Okay, and as I say, we will explore this concept in much more detail uh, in the next video. Okay, so uh, we'll have a break here. In the next video, we're still going to be discussing group actions, but what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at another way in which you can capture this concept of associating uh, with elements of the group set permutations of the set A. And the other way is slightly more intuitive, but people often use group actions more than this other way. Okay, but the two are capturing the exact same concept. So the next thing that we're going to move on to is permutation representations of groups.